today I've been listening to a lot of uh, different podcasts and watching different channels, watching different videos, you know, all talking about Javante Davis, talking about his career, see, you know, look back at some old videos. And I'm pretty much convinced at this point that, uh, yeah, I think, I, you know, we may be looking at a hype job, bro. I think uh, we are looking at a hype trade in Javante Tate Davis. Now, one thing I will say, I've always said this about him, that he has a good skill set. Like, he's a complete fighter. But just because somebody's a complete fighter doesn't mean that, that they're not a hype job, okay? And what, my, what I mean is... You can be a complete fighter, but then who are you a complete fighter against? Okay? Now, when you look back at everything that Javante Davis has been saying up to this point, when it comes to Devin Haney, right, in particular, sometimes you know, you'll hear him say stuff about Shakur, but it's mainly his arch, ne- his arch nemesis is Devin, the dream Haney, right? You've been hearing take in the past few years say a whole lot of things up until recent. You've heard him talk about Devin Haney can't punch. Um, he has no chin. And his uh, and Tank Davis, his cheerleaders, on different podcasts, on different channels, they'll call Devin Haney a runner. He runs and moves around too much. Um, all, all of these things, he doesn't. He's not a draw. But at the same time, people have called Tank's bluff, called his team's bluff. You had the Saudis call the bluff on the money. You had Devin, his fam, his father say they'll, they'll, they, they know they're the B-side. They'll take whatever they can get. And I know Devin, they'll do it because they did it with Cambosis. You know, so at the same time, every time they bluff their excuses out of oblivion, they erase, they, they pretty much make them look silly when um, people confront their, you know, whatever they try to put out there. Like, okay, well, it's about the money. Well, okay, here go $40 million. And then they come out with something else about Ferraris. Or, well, he can't, uh, Devin is too heavy uh, for, for for take at 140. He's going to, he's going to rehydrate too much. And then they turn around and want to fight with Carter Ben. Or to justify the Carter Ben fight, you got his yes man, they'll say, well, you know, um, Devin's gonna run around, so you know, Tank needs his butterfly net to catch him, you know, stuff like that. So, so this is all what you do when you protect the hype trade. When you're protecting somebody that's padded, that has a padded record, or he's protected, they'll, they'll, anything that, that you can counter their arguments with, they will justify it by coming up with something else. This is what they be doing on these channels, and I'll be watching them. And other channels are now starting to see the light. They're starting to say, well, well, damn, man, this guy Tank, he's this killer. He, he's he's a complete fighter. He got speed, power. He got all this stuff, but why is his career so limited? Why? why? And, and even the whole argument that they came up with, the argument of they, they came about the big fights. They came about the you know money. They don't really care about belts. This is what they said. All of that is also thrown out the window because if it's if it was all about the money, when the Saudis offered the forty million, Tate would have took it. His team would have took it. You know, and, and and some would say, well, that's probably not all Tate's fault. You know, maybe some of it is Al Haven's fault for you know they don't want the Saudis involved in it. But I'm like, bro, but Tate said that he's his old man. He said this, so obviously, pretty much, it's looking like that was all a lie. And when it comes, it's almost like when it comes to Devin Haney, he gets really irritated. When you bring him up, he gets irritated. Just go back and watch that interview with, on the Rise podcast with with Blue Blood. You know, you'll see, you know, we just talk his, you know, Blue Blue spoke his opinion, just like everybody else. He gave his opinion on who went to fight, and Tate got, got highly, highly emotional. And who did the, who's the two people Tate brought up? Shakur. And, T- and Devin, nobody was even talking about Shakur, but he brought he put Shakur in the mix. Why? Because he sparred Shakur, he sparred Devin, and he immediately got defensive. He immediately got defensive, right there. So I think that is something wrong with that, bro. 
There's something wrong with that. And I think um, Floyd saw something in this. Well, AB is the one that brought Tate to Floyd, right? Floyd probably came up with some kind of master plan. Like, yo, you know, this kid, I've been watching him when he was little. He got he got good boxing skills. He seems like he got good punching power. But so let's 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 build him up to be this this, this destructive puncher that will lay everybody out. But in order for him to be able to lay everybody out, he has to fight a certain type of fighter his whole career to keep the hype train running. Okay? Now, like I said, if you look back at all his his look at his recent fights, Ryan Garcia, no footwork. Roley Romero, no footwork. Leo Santa Cruz, no footwork. Hector Garcia, no footwork. The list goes on and on. And then when you look back, when they were trying to line up a fight with Gary Russell Jr., they didn't want to do that. Why? Gary Russell has good footwork. He'll move around. They were trying to line up a fight with Tevin Farber. That didn't happen. Tevin Farber doesn't have big punching power. So Tank should have easily been able to negate that and get him out of there, right? Wrong. They never made that fight. And you got to ask yourself why. Because Tevin Farber is a mover as well, right? But if Tank is as skilled as they say he is, he should know how to cut off the ring and neutralize his opponent from moving, right? Bro, when you talk, when you look at the Rise podcast, dude, Mr. Will said, but Devin Haney, you know, Carter Bitt is going to be right there for Devin to fight, uh, for Tank to hit. He's pretty much, that's what he said. He's like, uh, you ain't got to worry about Carter Bitt. Carter Bitt going to be right there, which translates, Carter Bitt is going to be right there for Tank to punch on. Well, you know, Tank, Tank will need a, a butterfly net when it comes to Devin Haney, meaning he's going to have to, you know, a harder time connecting with Devin Haney. Well, that's not Devin Haney's fault. That's Tank's fault for not knowing how to cut the ring off, right? Doesn't Tank know how to cut the ring off? Yeah, but against who? You see Tank cut the ring off many times, right? Against flat-footed fighters that they try to display some kind of movement. And Tate got to him, like, you know, like Mario Barrios. He doesn't really have footwork. And when he did try to move around, Tate was able to uh, cut the ring off on him when he started applying the pressure. I don't think he's going to be able to do that with Devin Haney. They know it. Everybody knows it. Those sparring sessions, something happened in those sparring sessions that nobody wants us to see. But Floyd Mayweather Sr. pretty much told you what happened in one of those sessions, okay? He told you. And even, you know, Devin even meant, yeah, you know, Tate caught me with a shot, good shot on one of the spars, but it was nothing major. It was never no knockout. You got to ask yourself this too. He said he cracked both of them. He said he cracked Shakur. He cracked Dev. Why didn't he knock them out in sparring? Didn't everybody say Tate is stopping people in sparring? He's stopping heavyweights. He's stopping all these big cruiserweight dudes. But you wasn't able to stop Shakur and Devin. Little old Shakur, little old Devin Haney. You weren't able to stop them in sparring. You just cracked them, but they didn't, they didn't drop or nothing. What's that telling you right there? That's the reason why Calvin Ford, they don't want him to fight Shakur. They don't want him to fight Devin. Because he sparred them. They can, they can figure take out because they had experience in the ring with him. And because they're good movers in the ring. It's not about the power all the time. And it's definitely with Devin doing what he did to Regis Progray. He's looking like a nightmare even more for Tank. They definitely don't want no problems with him now. That's why Carter Big got thrown in the mix. You know, so Devin won't stop the fucking hype train. I, th I believe Devin Haney and probably Shakur Stevenson are the only ones right now uh, that are the movers, that are great pure boxers. That can stop the Tank Davis hype, drink, hype train. Something else that that Mr. Will do said that made no sense. Pretty much what he said was Tank, he, he, he's going to need a butterfly net to catch Devin. Meaning, Devin is so such a good mover, we're going to have to go find him. We don't want to have to work hard to do that. Cool. Yet, you got other fighters at 140. You got Raymond Rotella. All these dudes at 135 that can punch, they don't really have good foot movement. Uh, Sabrina Matias, you don't see him utilizing the ring much. Gary Antoine Russell was right there at 140. Why he don't fight them dudes? Why he don't fight them? 
because because you know why they're more skilled they, they they're, they're just they they have heavy heads but they have more skill to their to their madness roly don't and neither does Ryan garcia they're limited they're one trick ponies um gary Antoine russell is it sabriel with tears as in spite you know you watch his fight and you you'll see he does have certain different aspects to his game as well they don't want no parts of that so they want punchers I, I, I think I decoded what take the the, for, the the formula for him to keep looking as good as he's looking. When it comes to punchers, they got to have him in the ring with punchers that have limited skill set and no footwork. Or they got to have him in there with light punchers with no footwork. They can't have him in there with heavy punchers with, with, that can move and have good endurance. And they definitely can't have him in there with pure boxers because he's gonna have a hard time getting to them and cutting them off, the, cutting the ring off with them. Somebody with, with, with superior IQ like Shakur and Devin is gonna give him a multitude of problems. And they told you this. He told you we don't want him in there with anybody that can move around, so he can't get the knockout. That those are the fighters, especially the pure boxers, that will derail the take hype trade. And if Devin get there with him, they fear that. Kind of like, um, you know, there's a car, you know, like, let's say there's a, a car that's being built, a car that's been on the road for a few years, and it has all of this, you know, they call it reliable and all this other stuff, and it's been having a good run. And then when they start when they, they start figuring out stuff, stuff go, start going wrong, uh, people start driving it a little bit more. And you get all these recalls, and then the car finds you find out that the car ain't what you thought it was. You know, it's crazy. So look, I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty certain that that's what's, what's going on here. He is a, he's a hype job, dude. I'm gonna have to put him in the same bucket that I put Edgar Belonga in because when he came out, he was doing if he was touted as this big knockout dude, getting all these knockouts in the first round and all that. And then he stepped it up, it changed, and that's what's gonna happen with Tank. When he steps it up past fucking a Ryan Garcia level fighter, it's going to look much different for him. It doesn't matter if the person has punching power or not. They're going to smoke him. And that's what's going to happen. And they don't want him to lose that O because they're trying to model him after the Floyd, after Floyd Mayweather. But the difference is Floyd also cherried a lot of his fights. But he also did fight a lot of fights that nobody thought he would fight. I ain't seen that yet from Tate. What y'all think? This your boy Rebel Life Boxer. Drop a comment. Talk to me. I'll catch y'all later on the next one. And I'm off this.